The Ann Arbor Newshawks. Three men bringing you the stories behind the news. Back page stories that should be in the headlines. The stories under the covers. The stories that reveal the muck under the rake in our town. Chance Langford. Beaumont Vivant. Jacques Lebet. Each man putting aside any semblance of personal ambition so that our community is better served. Each man is hoping to make a difference. Whether it's over Ann Arbor or on the streets, the news hawks blanket the city. And as masters of disguise, they move about undetected between the town and gown social circle. They can be ruthless when they have to be. And yes, sometimes they just push too hard. But that's what makes them so good. Each having earned his badge of honor, the Newshawks are there for you, Ann Arbor. I'm Chance Langford. And I'm Beaumont Vivant. Before we start tonight, the Newshawks would like to read a statement of apology to our viewers. Recently, the Ann Arbor News, using the Freedom of Information Act, uncovered a scandal involving text messaging going on during city council meetings. This is an issue so huge so important to our city that we know you're asking where were the news hawks on this one? You men get your fingernails dirty digging into stories like this. You let us down. And to that we say guilty as charged. You deserve better from the news hawks and we promise that we will work harder. We will work longer. Well, we, we can't really work longer because we already operate 24-7. But we will work harder in the hopes that we can earn back your trust. That wasn't easy, but let's move forward. The Newshawks have learned that there will soon be a major announcement coming from the Ann Arbor School Board. For that, let's go out to Jacques Labatt. Thanks, Beaumont. I'm here at Skyline High School, where we've learned that the school board, in an effort to fill the underutilized Skyline High School, announced the closure of both Pioneer and here in high schools. The students from both schools will be transferred to Skyline and the new school will be renamed Ann Arbor High School. In the spirit of cooperation and in order to make absolutely no one unhappy, the school board has decided the mascot will be a purple river rat riding on the back of an eagle. This is Jacques Labatt giving it back to you. It is rumored that the Pioneer property would then be sold to the University of Michigan, who would use the entire site for a four-story parking structure for football parking. The top floor nearest the stadium will have bleachers to provide 5,000 obstructed view seats that will keep the big house number one in attendance. We understand that the Huron High property is being considered by Washtenaw Community College. The president of the school says the community college can justify spending several million dollars on real estate because they would use that river location for a new canoe livery operator school and paddle boat academy. The U of M is also an interested buyer. Their spokesman says that the university has really absolutely no use for the property whatsoever, but they would like to continue their strategy of keeping properties off of the city's tax rolls. In a sign of the times, we've learned that the Ann Arbor News Building has been sold to Tio's Mexican Restaurant. Tio's had just leased another location, but as a restaurant spokesman told us, the Ann Arbor News accepted our rock bottom price and with the additional space we can dedicate an entire floor just to enchiladas. And by promising to hire three new employees, Tio's received a 20-year tax abatement from the city and became the fastest growing company in the state of Michigan. Congratulations, Tios. And yet another sign of tough times in our area. We have learned that the Woodward Dream Cruise was very close to being canceled this year after more than 2,000 vintage muscle car owners withdrew from the cruise and instead turned their cars in under the government's Cash for Clunkers program. Organizers replaced the hot rods with a Toyota-sponsored fleet of souped-up Priuses. We'd like to answer a couple of letters 
from the sacks of mail that have come in from our viewers. Mr. K.C. of Ann Arbor writes, Does the city have any plan to take care of the potholes in our streets? To answer this question, we contacted City Hall and spoke to the person in charge of pothole reconstruction, Mr. Phil Crevice. He assures us that the city has a very specific plan that grades every pothole from level 10 up to level 1, which are the biggest. When a pothole reaches a level 3, it moves to the priority list. The News Hawks have obtained a picture of two potholes on Gettys Road that meet the level 3 standard. Ow. Oh! To quote Phil Crevice, we like to get these at the level 3 because you can lose the better part of an 18-wheeler in those level 1s, and that just makes the city look bad. Finally, we have a question from Mrs. C.B. of Ann Arbor who writes, The traffic island planters look especially beautiful this year. How about an update? You'll recall that last summer we talked to the city about its plan for using the traffic island plantings as a way to create that good first impression for people coming into Ann Arbor. So we again contacted botanist Fern Green who told us that she is excited about the building anticipation leading up to the announcement of this year's theme. Last year's theme was the life cycle of the Ann Arbor tree. And this year's brand new plantings follow the theme, Edible Weeds, Nature's Free Salad Bar. Don't view those common weeds as a garden nuisance. Look at them as a potential source of free food. Ms. Green sent along a salad made from a variety of weeds from the planters, including chickweed and dandelion greens. If we throw in a splash of balsamic vinegar and olive oil, it's um, very tasty. And we've learned that city employees on their own time have planted a weed in the planters that when dried can be added to baked goods for medicinal purposes. Beaumont, who is suffering from a headache, headache seems to be favoring the medicinal baked goods over the weed salad provided by the city. So kudos to the city for using the planters both as a source of food and as a way to keep the lid on the rising cost of health care. That's it for now. I'm Chance Langford. And speaking for Beaumont Vibon, see you next time. Cut it out, Beaumont.